The gospel of Christ sets forth the perfections of God in such a way that any regenerate man cannot help but be moved with awe, wonder and praise at those truths it speaks about. The gospel sets forth God as the creator and sustainer of our world, that God is intimately involved in every aspect of our lives and in the world in which we live. The gospel portrays that God knows all things, he's omniscient, God is present everywhere, he's omnipresent, that God is almighty, he's omnipotent. All attributes that men have none. Man is limited in his knowledge, he does not know all things. Man is limited in location, he has a body. And man is limited in his power, whereas God is infinite in knowledge, presence and power. The Gospel portrays God having attributes that men have and were derived from him, such as love, mercy, grace, tenderness, compassion, justice, faithfulness, truthfulness, keeping of promise and so on. The Gospel informs us of God's decrees, purposes and promises, that is, those things that he has determined shall be, and these are spoken in prophecy. It is the Gospel that records the fulfilment of these purposes and promises. The Gospel also sets forth God as a trinity of persons, subsisting in one undivided eternal spiritual essence, the Father, Son and Spirit. For the scripture reads in Genesis 1, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved on the surface of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And John 1 reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Then, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Gospel declares the eternal purpose of God in Christ, giving reason for the creation and redemption of his people. The whole account is told us in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. There has been and still is a great opposition to these truths that the scriptures teach. We must not lose sight of this. It is a responsibility and privilege for those who've seen these things to teach them, to defend the truths and earnestly contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. The generations to follow us have no knowledge of these things and they must learn them from us who have seen and beheld the glory of God as displayed in the face of Jesus Christ. The natural enmity in the heart of man is to oppose the truth of God, his grace, his purposes, and he will seek to cover up, deny or cloud over the truths of God, the truths of God's sovereignty in respect to the creation and redemption that is in Christ. Atheists deny that God created the world. Evolutionists deny God created our world and that he's actively involved in sustaining his creation. Atheistic scientists, atheistic philosophers, atheistic historians seek alternative explanations to their existence and deny all the gospel teachings. Their aim? To wipe out the record of what God has done historically and what he has foretold will be done and ultimately to rob the next generation of the knowledge of God given to us in the person of Jesus Christ. The Gospel tells of God's purpose in creation, the fall of man in Adam, his need of redemption. The Gospel tells of the absolute fall and ruin of the human race in Adam due to his sin. It speaks of the doom of all those lost in their sins and ignorance of God. The Gospel tells of the history of the Jews, their rise and fall and the coming into the world of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel tells of the life, death 
and resurrection of Jesus Christ, of his atoning death and the way of salvation and forgiveness of sins by faith in him. It tells of salvation of both Jew and Gentile forming one people in Christ, of a spiritual kingdom, not national or geographic. The gospel gives reason and the ground for hope in God when men see no hope in a world at war and where men are not at peace with each other. It speaks of a sovereign choice of God that was made before the world was to save a vast number of people in Christ, that this choice was not based on foreseen faith or of man's choice, but on God's sovereign choice to the salvation of some. The Gospel tells of the death, resurrection and atoning blood of Christ being shed for his church, which is known as particular redemption. The Gospel teaches of the way of life, telling how we are to face life and all its difficulties, that we all face and have to live. How we should behave one towards each other, how to live and behave in a world where God is denied, where religious error exists in the light of gospel revelation. It is our privilege and responsibility to teach, by all means possible, those things necessary to preserve the gospel that we have received. We need to preserve the history of how we have the scriptures faithfully preserved through the Reformation to our day in the majority and received texts of scripture and to expose the errors of modern reconstructed texts that are used in modern translations of the Bible. The truth taught in the gospel are those brought to light through the reformation of the 16th century and honed to precision in the confessions of faith in reformed churches in Europe and England. These truths are clearly set forth in the confessions of faith or articles of religion of independent nonconformist Christian churches, such as our, be it in particular Baptist Pakistan articles of religion, which have full scriptural references. They are Calvinistic, teaching the full deity of the eternal Son of God, Jesus Christ, who came into the world to save sinners, and they teach particular redemption. It is my wish and intention to call those who see the importance of these matters to assist and stand up for truth, not to sleep or ignore these matters spoken of, as our next generation and elect children of God need us to earnestly contend and teach these things in our day. This is the privilege of the saints. It is for this reason we have formed, be it in particular Baptist Pakistan, and opened a minister Bible college in Rahim Yar Khan, Pakistan, in order to educate our generation and those to follow.